Hey Woodcutters, Topsaw here. Today's project, we're gonna build a marble maze. It's a 3 8 inch ball bearing. We're gonna cut the track with a half inch ball end mill on the CNC router and make it out of pine. Got these ball bearings, big bag of them on Amazon. Here are the pine boards we milled out. This is a sugar pine that we took down. This is all rough cut on our wood miser mill. Check the thickness with calipers first, and then we'll run it through the planer on both sides. Plane down on both sides. Now we'll just rough cut to length. You see that beautiful blue streaking? This is all bark beetle in there. Uh, we're just cutting to rough length right now. I'm gonna joint one edge to get it surfaced on three sides. Rip this side, rip the opposing side parallel, surface on four sides. Cross cut five and six. Surface on all six sides. We're gonna find our dimensions, 19 in X, 12 in Y. Find our thickness with the caliper, 1.000. Write it on our board, transfer that to our notebook. Find the center of the board using the Pythagorean theorem, corner to corner. Use a pilot hole, put one screw in, pivot off of that, and make sure you're square to the table, and then fixture it down. Again, making sure you have pilot holes and screws way out of the cut window. Make sure you got a half inch ball end mill. This is a four flute ball end mill. We'll put that in and the dust shrouds go back on. Okay, before I go to the computer, I wanna pull out my notebook and I wanna do some sketching in my notebook and kind of figure out some dimensions and bring that to the computer before I design it in a CAM software. I'm gonna draw it in MasterCAM, but you could draw it in any CAM software, Fusion 360. This process should really be the same. Um, place you always start is what tool you're using. I'm using that for scientific. What cutter am I using? I'm using a half inch ball end mill. What is my stock setup? The red block that I'm cutting is 12 inches by 12 inch by one inch. After I have all that information, then I start my geometry. I'm starting to create my geometry. And then after I create my geometry, I tool path it. And that's telling the CNC how to run the, the program. And when I'm all done toolpathing it, I post it. And that post takes all of this vector information and converts it into G code, which is a numeric code. So the CAD CAM software might be a file extension like MCX for MasterCAM, but the code that actually runs on the CNC is NC. The file extension is NC for numeric code. And those are kind of the big ideas behind it. So as I look at this right here, this is a sample one. You could see I use up big ball end mill. I could check it with a ruler and see that those cuts are half inch across. So I decided to draw a pocket in the center. So that's this pocket right here. That's gonna have a one inch diameter. I'm gonna have an ending pocket right there also with a one inch diameter. And then I drew circles around this. And these circles right here, this first one has a diameter of four inches. Then the next one is six inches, eight inches, 10 inches, and my board is 12 by 12. After I drew that, I uh, drew some lines to get the marble in. And then my next step is to cut parts of the circle so it won't go in. So I'll cut out you know, this little part of the circle here. So you could run a little ways, 
but not get to the center, you have to run all the way this way. You remember we're using that half inch wide mill. So if these two things are two inches apart on diameter, that's only one inch apart on radius. So that, that I'm gonna set that mill or that router bit to come down the center line. So it's traveling down the center line right here. It's removing all of this wood right here. All right, it's gonna travel this way, remove all this wood. It's a half inch diameter. It's gonna pull a quarter inch off of that a quarter inch off of that, leaving me with a half inch in between. And that seems like a pretty good wall thickness right here. So that's the general idea of how I'm gonna create it. I'll go to Mastercam. I won't spend a lot of time on creating it in Mastercam. You could do your own design, but I'll show you how to toolpath it, and then we'll go and run the part. Okay, here I am in Mastercam. I won't do all the geometry, just a couple quick recaps. I do first set the kind of router that I'm gonna use. It's a Techno Servo RMD. When I select that, this comes up. I set up my stock right here. I'm gonna call the bit in the dead center of the board at the top, and it's 12 by 12 by one inch thick. So I do need to hit all those settings. If I hit display, I can see it as this red box around my geometry. And then now I'm gonna create all my geometry. I've already done that, so that all looks pretty good. Uh, and now I'm going to toolpath it. And again, if you don't have Mastercam, all these processes are the same. And if you could follow along in here, you'll understand a lot of these variables that you're setting. So I'm going to go to toolpath. The first thing I want to do is cut out these two pockets. So I'm going to go to pocket. I'm going to name that. I could call it pocket. I'm going to select that one and that one. And then now that I selected them, I got to select my tool. That's a half inch straight bit. I'm going to actually go to my tool library, and then my tool library, I'm gonna find a half inch, scroll down through here, half inch ball end mill. A good feed rate would be something like 100, depending how deep I'm gonna plunge, and then 50, usually set that about half your feed rate. And again, it depends how deep my passes are. I'm not gonna change any of these things. Depth of cut, this is a good safety. This is a maximum it'll go on a single pass. And a good rule of thumb here is less than the diameter of the bit. So I'll set that at 0.4. And then um, linking parameters. This is gonna be all absolute settings. And this is a total depth. It's gonna be a negative because I call the top of stock zero. So it's gonna be negative 0.5. And I'm gonna do a second tool path that's gonna run the bit down the center of these lines. I'm gonna go tool path, contour, select it as a chain or a partial chain. Uh, I'm going to click on this outer circle, it went all the way around. I'm going to click on this one to go in. It goes around this circle. I want to get that line, that line. Make sure I don't miss any lines. And obviously, you know, if I work my way out in, it'll be more efficient. So I think I got all my lines. And then on this, again, I'm going to use that same half inch ball end mill, feed rate of about 100 and a plunge rate of 50. That's inches per minute. That is feed rates, how quickly it's traveling in X and Y, plunges up and down in the Z direction. Older cut parameters. I'm actually gonna turn my cut parameters off. So here's my cutter, and I can see I'm running down the center line. That's what I want. So I'm gonna run down the center line of it, and then I'm gonna hit depth of cut. Again, I'm gonna make this lessen the diameter of the cutter, so it'll do it in two passes lead in, lead out. I'm gonna turn that off. That's how it plunges in a different place and then laterally cuts in, but that's gonna screw up my project. Nothing here, nothing there. And then these are all absolute with the setting of negative 0.5. So what I would do right now is I would save my file because before I verify it right here, that verification takes a ton of memory and that's where it's gonna crash if it crashes. So I'm gonna verify it. This is only one toolpath selected. I wanna select them both. Now they're both selected. This verification is gonna be a run through. I'll watch it in isometric. It should cut the pockets first and it should cut it in two passes. And then I think it cut the whole part out the way I wanted it. It's gonna stay fixture down nicely because uh, the screws are way out here. And then when I'm all done, I'm gonna cut it to a 12 by 12 square. And then maybe I'll cut miters on the corners to make it like an octagon or something. I'm gonna to go to G1, that's a post. So now I'm taking all this vector information and I'm converting it into numeric code. So it's telling you, this is numeric code. It's gonna have an NC file extension specifically for the techno step. 
So that's the right post, but I'm going to put it on the flash drive and then transport that flash drive out into the shop and actually run it. So let's just take a look at how many lines of code this is. There's a lot of arcs in there, so it'll probably be a few lines of code. So here's the actual G code I'm running. Always starts with the percent. G0 is rapid travel. So rapid travel up above the part, 0.255 thou above the part. Turn the machine on at a spindle speed of 18,000. Travel to this coordinate. Travel to this coordinate in the Z direction, go down. And now you have an automated feed or a program speed of G1, a feed rate of 50 because it's a plunge into the part, 213 lines of code. So let's go ahead and run it, see how that comes out. Here's my four scientific. There's my half inch ball end milled centered right on the top of stock in the center. I've loaded my file in here under file uh, open G code. So there it is, that all looks right. I need to go up here and let this computer know that that's the origin. So I'm going to zero all. And then I can do a little safety check, make sure nothing's anywhere around. And I could just go right down here to G code and run. So let me just do a safety check and then we'll start it. All right, it's all done running. You can see there it climb cuts and the conventional cuts, the depth of cut doing the multiple passes. When you're all done, you always Z up first. So you always want to Z up and then Y back. Uh, nice way to fix it. Screws were far and away from my part. I'm just going to take these screws out and then go to the table saw. And I cut the screw holes off on the table saw. I could also cut miters on those corners. Um, it actually looks pretty nice. I can come over here, do a little bit of sanding. And... <coughs> there are ball bearings. I'll put a link to the, both the, the mill I used and also the ball bearings. This thing seems to run nicely. Oh, it's a lot of fun. This is a lot harder than the other one. This is a great project. Uh, this is actually one of our best selling projects on our web store. If you're new to the channel, think about subscribing and please comment below if you do this project, how you did it. It'd be kind of cool to do a big one. Thank you for watching.